Welcome back, everybody, to Investor Intel. I'm very excited today because we're going to be speaking with Michael Lendy about Predictive AI, an artificial intelligence company, an area I'm very curious about. Michael, welcome. Thanks for having me. You look like you're wrapped up in your scarf there. Are you cold? I'm just getting, you know what, just getting into the spirit of the things. If you can't beat them, you might as well join them. It's well, pretty cold out there right now. Well done. So let's get right to it. Predictive AI is an a artificial intelligence company with a couple of core engines. And you've recently made a massive announcement about Thermal Pass. Tell us about that. So Thermal Pass comes from a joint venture. Uh, between our subsidiary, AI Labs, and a private company, which is called Commersive Solutions. And what we've come up with is a touchless fever detection system. Touchless. So thermometers? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So instead of camera-based, which are not being very well received at the moment due to issues of privacy, we have thermal medical-grade sensors. And our thermal medical grade sensors are the same sensors that are in hospitals in industrial thermometers. So are these are these retrofits into a wall or is it a separate grid you install? It's a device that's an upside down U that's seven feet tall and about the wingspan of my arms wide. And you walk through it at regular speed. You don't have to slow down. In fact, you can put 60 people per minute through. And there are 24 medical grade sensors in the thermal pass, each taking 100 readings per second. So basically, so, so you're, not, you're not just doing the forehead then? No, you're, you could in here or here, wherever the skin is exposed. Wow. So it's quite accurate so as you're going through. That's quite the processing power. Is, yeah. is the processing power local or is it on the mothership? So both. So you, what you've got is uh, connectivity is a great thing. It comes with an LTE connectivity. So if someone's sitting nearby, whether it's six feet away or, or you know, 10 feet away, um, they can be attached with a cable and there's a, very simple dashboard on the end telling you who came, how many people came through, how many people had a fever, how many people didn't. Um, and then there's a whole other level, which is what we call enterprise connectivity, which we can either do with Sigfox or our own process. And what it does is we integrate our data into the existing platform that exists. A great example of this is if you're going to the hockey game or basketball game and they scan your ticket, um, you know, the same place that information goes is the same place we can have our thermal pass information go and they can they can integrate. So we provide that and it can be on the person who's monitoring the touchless systems, right? iPhone or Android or uh, iPad or PC or what have that's you. A, that's a lot of data. I would suspect then you aggregate that data and do something with it. Yeah, so there's a lot going on in that space right now. Um, there's there's three different methods of revenue. One is the upfront purchase of the unit. Two is the MRR. So the monthly recurring revenue model is based upon service and maintenance. And then, uh, of course, what we're going to be doing with the data, which we're still working on. I should mention, when you go through the thermal pass, this gateway, um, it's a very unobtrusive experience, and it's built to be you, that. You can't, you can't really. feel it. There's no. No, there's a, yeah, exactly. We want it to be the antithesis of that. We didn't want you to feel like, oh my goodness, what's happening? You know, yet people don't like a, you know, a thermal gun held up to their face, and it's very intrusive. This is just, you just roll through it, normal speed. You don't even notice it. And if there's a fever, there's a red light that goes off and a audio sound, but both can be disassembled because if, if need be, because some places, some public places are requesting privacy where, you, where only the person operating it on the, uh, on the computer screen will see whether they have a fever or not. Yeah, there, there are a lot of privacy issues around this whole area. We don't want to see the coronavirus or SARS-CoV-2, as it's properly called, stampede us into excessive government surveillance and attraction of our rights. Now, we were talking earlier about competitors in Singapore, and you made an important distinction. Yes. So the Chinese camera-based solutions are banned in the United States and have to be removed by August of 2021. And we are getting really uh, solid and definitive feedback from Canadians and Europeans as well that 
they're liking the fact that we are medical grade sensor based and not camera based, thus preserving the anonymity of those passing through and, and, and not having to have someone near you. So keeping in protocol with social distancing. Um, so that's the, those, it's a big deal, the whole, the whole privacy concern, because people don't want others knowing their whereabouts. Or their health. Uh, or, yeah, something their as health. simple as that. Yeah, simple now, as that. You've got an interesting background, Michael. You've been a serial entrepreneur. Start, inspire, ignite, and do it again. That sounds great. I like that. You can have it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no, I know. I, I started... Uh, uh, as an entrepreneur at age 17 and, and and haven't stopped since the it was a bug that just never went away i love creating from startup all the way through uh most of what i've done in the past been private startups who some have led to ipos and uh it's very exciting times for us because you know even 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 and and god willing covid goes away soon with the vaccine even with that being said you know i've said before and i'll say it again I think that in speaking with different psychologists and psychiatrists on the matter, you know, there's been a reconditioning of the mind in terms of going into public spaces and how comfortable one feels. And even if there was no COVID tomorrow, um, the whole point is that the measures that people have come up with and the technologies that people have been inspired to create. And we have definitely, what we've got here is an innovation in, inspired out of necessity. Um, will last for a number of years if for fear of spreading other contagions that may come along. And it's just, we're kind of reconditioned to, uh, to think differently now, you know? And so I think it makes a lot of sense that uh, this is something that applies to malls, office buildings, stadiums, sports events, concerts, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Um, there's another part of the company, which is the weather telematics. Yes. Very curious. So, Tell me about that. Yeah. I love I love this company. Uh, it's uh, it's predictive AI, and we have our wholly owned su subsidiary called another one called WTX Weather Telematics, and we produce uh, predictive AI. I'll give you a great example. We have a new product that uh, we've announced, which is going to be operational in the next couple of weeks, which is called Alert Fleet. And what it does is it does just that. It gives you hazard alerts in your truck that tell you on your Android or iPhone that's propped up there and tell the dispatch there is black ice 300 meters ahead. Slow down, reroute, or so, there's hydroplane. So this is for, for commercial trucks, 18 wheelers, reefers. It's not for oh. retail yet. Uh, it's not for consumers yet. It can be. That's something that could could be something down the line. But right now, we're positioning it at GPS companies, software companies who are already providing fleets with great technology, and we're going to layer our technology in with theirs. So we're looking to do those partnerships and also dealing direct and selling direct to fleets. But yes, um, you know, in speaking with several uh, fleet owners, they're spending a lot of money on deductibles, premiums, out-of-pocket expenses for smaller accidents, and fuel. And those are four areas where we can save them a lot of money. We're also speaking to the insurance companies as well, because you know, one 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 fleet manager, a trucking company, said to me recently, you know, if if I could know that they're going to arrive on time and safely, that's not only a lot of money, that's peace of mind for us. So it's 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 a big deal. And and how that works is we have hundreds uh, of millions of of miles of road data that's proprietary that we've gathered over the last 10 years all over North America. And when that historical data meets current atmospheric data, it combines to give you a hyper local uh, predictive right. response. It's like the old neural nets from the 1990s, early 2000s, right? That was the, the theory behind them. Yeah. Cool. Um, thermal pass is Health Canada approved or not? It is. So Health Canada gave us our medical device establishment license, for short, MDEL, and uh, which is great because it allowed us to market and sell and, and get this thing rolling. So we're very excited. We have amazing resellers in Quebec and BC and in Ontario, and we're moving things along. We just 
did our commercial launch a week a week and a half ago at Anderson Haulage, which is funny enough a trucking company, but yeah. fourth th- who knew fourth thermal pass. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, but there's a cost to selling. You need working capital until your revenue catches up. And PAI recently did a financing around eighteen cents. Correct. How much did you raise? Uh, one point five million. And how long will that last? That's going to last quite a while. I mean, we're we're. We, we, we raised what we needed and, and we we're very comfortable, uh, with where we're headed. That that's going to be handling a lot of burn for many, many, many months because, uh, we've, we've got a solid plan in place on, on how we're going to, uh, go to market with both alert fleet and thermal pass. So it's, it's very nice for, a for a, a company that's sort of, renewed its 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 uh way of of direction and got a, a whole brand new start cool well I, that's my list of questions anything you want to add you know uh if if uh if you're an essential service or you know anybody who has one and and you're interested in mitigating the spread of contagions check out thermalpass.com well you know that, that that's excellent that's excellent. Hey, you know, Ontario now, isn't it the law that every employer has to have some means of checking the employees? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the premier of Ontario uh, included in one of his announcements a few, two or three weeks ago that he's going to mandate, they're going to mandate that uh, employers have to screen their employees. Well, there you and, go. Uh, and I think the best way to do that is with uh, a device like Thermopass, which respects people's privacy. It's non-intrusive and it's, it's not scary. Exactly. Michael, it's been wonderful to meet you and chat with you. Uh, we'll Very follow nice. up in a few months. Absolutely. Thanks for the time. Predictive AI trading as PAI on the Venture Exchange. Have a great day.